Hey guys, Travis Grant here. I'm here to talk to you about holding your paddle. So the how you paddle, hold your paddle, top and bottom arm. Uh, this is just me and how, how I do it. There is still no right or wrong way on how to hold your paddle. Um, a lot of people you stay what shoulder width apart. This goes for stand up and canoe. I have a canoe paddle just because it's easier because I'm standing up. Uh, if I was to go shoulder width apart, be about there. That's sort of there, it's a little bit short. Um, this is a 50 inch paddle. Um, most people in the OC1, you know, everyone's different heights, but a lot of people get their height in their legs, yeah? So it's sort of a good practice. In, in the OC1, you know, you can use a 49 to a 50 inch paddle for most people, unless you're really tall, then you might use a 51. And in the six man, you sort of use anywhere from maybe a 50 to a 52. So we sort of want to try and keep the paddles, even though we're all different height, from our torso up, we're not hugely different. So if you're a tall guy, you know, don't grab a 53 inch, maybe get a 52, so then other people in the canoe, if you're doing a change the race, can use it. And in the one man, I said 49 to 50, sometimes 51 inch paddle. Uh, is I use a 50 personally, and I'm like 5'9". Five, five um, sometimes I use a 49. The shorter the paddle basically allows you to get a, a higher rating. Is that a good thing? Not so sure. Sometimes yes for sprints, but for long races, not necessarily. And anyway, so this is a 50 inch paddle for me. So for me, I'm gonna hold it about there. I don't like to choke the paddle. I do like to have it higher. The higher you have the hand, I mean, it's like shoveling. The more leverage you have, yes, yeah? so the more leverage I'm gonna get. But it, you be careful because it can load your muscles more. The wider you have your, your grip, the more you're forced to rotate and twist and use your body. So you see some people have really wide rotating you don't get as much reach others have really i guess hands closer together you get a lot more leverage but it can be more fatiguing and makes you use your arms a bit more because you're sort of having to crunch as opposed to twist sort of it's just this fine line so what i do is i do both I'll, if i'm on a twist i might bring my bottom arm and down and twist more if i'm maybe speeds up or i am trying to maybe muscle a bit more uh, i will bring my bottom hand up, it's like gears, this can be first gear, this can be fifth gear. Anyway, I'm more talk about the top hand. So, so I'm what, I'm basically there. I think you should be there, you know, if you've got a 49 inch paddle, 50 inch paddle, that's kind of where you hold it. And that's sort of where you are. I'm pretty wide, I'm, I'm, I am wanting to use my body with this, with this uh, grip. I'm not too short where I do want to bend my arms as much. Top arm, I personally, when we're paddling, you want to keep your paddle as positive. When I say positive, I mean that angle. Let's say that's a negative angle. That's a positive angle. You want to keep it as positive as you can in the water for as long as you can. Let's look at it like that. So you want to keep the blade at that angle. That's still positive. That's still, I still see that's positive. That's why there's such an angle on the blade. So that when we're halfway through our stroke, the blade is still at a positive angle, yeah? Um, that's why it's also the reach the catch it doesn't matter if you don't have to catch reach as far as you can you just reach and catch where it's comfortable because the blade that's good that's better yeah we're going to be out of trying to go forward correct so the th when the blade's like that we're grabbing more water we're propelling ourselves more forward when it's like this as opposed to this so reach is important the long strokes important but don't spend all your time trying to reach out as far as you can just reach where it's comfortable reach where you're going to get a good hold and then hold that water and then you want to keep the blade at that angle this angle as positive angle as you can as soon as we get to here you can let's just call this negative angle if we want um, we're still going to have grip on the water but it's going to start maybe start slicing the water or pushing us down more as opposed to pushing us forward so how do you keep the blade positive for longer for me it's on my top wrist so if you get this top wrist and if you roll it forward it's hard to see the blade angle goes down if i tilt my wrist back see that I'm, I'm just i'm just tilting my wrist back the blade goes forward if i tilt it forward the blade comes negative so that's just a simple when you're paddling why not have your wrist back so i'm trying to keep my blade as positive as i can as long as i can so when you reach my wrist is is back now i'm pushing down with this top arm I'm not pushing forward again it changes the angle if you push forward you just change the angle of the blade straight away if you push down i'm pushing down you know, like a pole vaulter 
and then stop the blade just from going all the way down in the water. This is what the bottom arm on. The bottom arm will then pull myself, I guess you say past the paddle, pull it forward. But the paddle has to grip the water. So you've got to keep it at a positive angle. Keep the wrist back, push down with this lat. Okay, I don't want to go down anymore. I'm going to pull myself forward. I'm going to pull with this lat. So I'm pushing down, wrist is back. I'm trying to keep that blade as positive angle as long as I can. Holding, 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 holding. Okay, I feel it loose, relax, straight back to the front. See if that helps.